So in this series of six videos, I'm going to show you how I've created these different text effects. I'm going to be starting with the impact font and the page size I'm using is A4. If you want to get similar results with the different settings, then you need to be working at the same scale. So let's get started. We zoom in and we start with this split text at the top. So first thing I want to do is split my text like this. So I'm going to use the Bezier pen tool. I'm going to set it to B spline. So we're going to click on this one at the top here. This just creates curves as we go. So we can click on this side, click up here, down here and over here. And you can see that it's creating this, this curved line as we go. So when we press enter to finish it off, it creates this nice smooth curve. Now we've got this um, funny shape because it's got a fill color presently. So what we can do is come down to the bottom here. We can hold down shift and we'll go for a color actually. Let's go for green. Hold down shift, click on the green, which will give us a stroke color so we can see our stroke. And we can come down and click on the X down here just to get rid of our fill color. So we've just got the path with a stroke. In the comments to an earlier video that I made, Steve kindly pointed out that we can also select our stroke color by clicking on our mouse wheel. So we can come down to our color palette at the bottom and if we use our mouse wheel, click on our mouse wheel, we can also select our stroke color so we don't need to hold down shift. It's a nice little trick to bear in mind. Right, so I've just changed to my selection tool so I can just position my curved line where I want it. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna hold down shift, I'm gonna select my text and I'm gonna come up to path and down to division. What that's done is if we click off, it's chopped up our letters and because we've used division, it's separated them all out. So now we can just come along and we can adjust these to however we want them. So we can click on it a second time to get our rotation handles. We can just go through, adjust these as we want them. Just try and get them similar to what I did before. Oh, missed, let's try again. So we've got our ABC. Next thing I wanna do is just add this gradient that we've got on each of them. So I'm just gonna drag a box over all of them with them all selected, I'm going to click on it again to get rotation handles and I'm going to hold down control to constrain our rotation to increments of 15 degrees. It's 15 degrees by default, but if you've changed your settings, it may be different. So what we do is just rotate this round. So we're up this way. This is just purely because I'm lazy and I don't want to sit there messing about with the gradients when I put them on. So I'm going to get my fill and stroke dialog box by coming up to the top and clicking on this button. We'll deselect. I'm going to select this A here or the top of the A and I'm going to come over and I'm going to change our fill to linear gradient. I'm then going to drag this around and I'm going to give it a nice blue color at one end so we can go for quite a vibrant blue. And if we click on the other stop up here, this is currently the alpha channel is down at fully transparent so we always need to make sure that that's fully opaque. So we drag that one up and then again we can bring this round to the blue and then we can just make it a nice pale blue over here. So I think I'm happy with that color. So the reason that I spun the text around is if we come over and grab our gradients tool over on the left hand side, we can see that our gradient is horizontal. So by doing this, I haven't had to move the stops of my gradient about on my text. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, with my selection tool, I'm just gonna click off. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm just gonna select all these other sections of my text. I'm then gonna change them to the linear gradient again. Now, because we've just made this gradient, up where it says gradient, we've got this little box. If we click on this, we get the selection of previous gradients. So this must be the one that I used for creating this one. So we're just gonna click on this and we can set the gradient the same on all of these. And as I said before, because it sets the gradient horizontal, you can see that the gradient bars are horizontal here. So by having it up this way, we don't have to sit there and correct the orientation of each of our gradient bars. So it's just a lazy way of doing things. So go back to my selection tool. I'm gonna to hold down shift. I'm gonna select the top of the A. I'm gonna group them all together so that we don't drag bits off unexpectedly. Click on it again, we get our rotation handles. We'll hold down control to constrain the rotation to increments of 15 degrees, unless you've changed it. And there we have our writing. At the bottom, I just created a slight shadow at the bottom by using the rectangle tool. So if we come up to our rectangle tool, we can drag out a rectangle at the bottom. 
Now at the moment we've got no fill color. So what we're gonna do is come down, we we'll give it a fill color, we can use black. And I'm gonna click on with my mouse wheel. I'm just gonna click on the X to get rid of the stroke color. And then we can come over and we can blur this and we can reduce the opacity slightly. It's a little bit dark. We can just reduce the opacity down till we're happy with it. I think that looks similar to the other one. Now this is on top, so we can see that this blurred rectangle is sitting over the top of the writing. We want it behind the writing. So all we're gonna do with our selection tool selected, we're gonna come up to the top and we're just gonna drop it down so it's behind the text. So that's our text complete. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.